questions about uh, Irma and what it meant to the Bay Area. Joining me right now is Dr. Chris Reynolds, an emergency operations expert. Expert is putting it mildly. Give me some of your credentials, some of the things that you've been through. Well, thank you. It's a pr pleasure to be here. I spent about 33 years with fire rescue over in Hillsborough County, retiring in 2010 as a shift commander. Uh -huh. Spent quite a bit of time dealing with you know, normal day-to-day -day emergencies as well as disasters, as you know, we're seeing right now, for example. And also spent quite a number of years in the Air Force, retiring uh, after 23 years as well in uh, 2013 and serving as an emergency preparedness liaison officer, which primarily was the defense support of uh, civilian authorities mm -hmm. where we would assist local communities in disaster response and primarily provide logistic support. So you've seen what we've done so far. Yes. And, and as of today, how do you think that we're doing, just generally looking at the big picture? I think we're doing very well. And I think we're doing very well because we have a robust system that relies on local, state, and federal resources in advance of a disaster. The fact that we have as many people as we do that had to evacuate, and as we've seen lately, trying to get back into Florida, get yeah, back into yeah. homes. The good and bad, right. Right. If you look at the infrastructure that's in place to support that with our Florida Highway Patrol, you know, with our road and streets people, uh, power grid folks, I mean, everyone's working in consort together. And you can contrast that to what happened back in, in 91 when Hurricane Andrew came through, oh, it was a mess. where it was essentially you know, a lockup, logistics lockup where nothing could move. There was no coordination. Contrast that to today where we have awesome coordination. And we have that because we have a professional cadre of trained and educated emergency managers serving in the roles that understand that coordination is critical for Rip, success. The script has really actually been written ahead of time. You yes. knew what every player would need to do because it had been scripted out. Now, w when we talk about, this is the conversation that also goes on. Uh, whether you shelter in place or whether you hit the road. Now, mm -hmm. this always gets to be very controversial because I know that the overall plan has always been, well, there should be some kind of a shelter that you can go to within two to five miles of your mm -hmm. place. What's your opinion on that? And you know there's this debate right. going on. Well, right, there is a debate going on. I mean, we've all seen on television where you have the diehard that says, well, I'm not leaving no matter what, and they're going to ride the storm out. You're always going to run into people that have that attitude, whether it's a Category 1 or a Category 5. You know, essentially... The decision to relocate is strictly based on, first of all, local emergency management's orders and or the local sheriff's orders, law enforcement, mm -hmm. whether you're in a mandatory evacuation zone. And a lot of it that has to do with the storm surge, and you can't exactly. mess around with storm surge. No. I mean, you can tweak the numbers on wind and that kind of right. stuff, but with a surge, it's, it's a certain but thing. Water is water. I mean, we all, in fact, we saw in Tampa, as Irma made the move, we saw the, the water being drawn out of Tampa Bay, Bayshore Boulevard, which normally is full of water yeah. was literally dry because it was being drawn out and that was an indicator of what was to come with Irma going north of us and then the storm surge coming in. But that saved us too. It didn't did. It, it yeah. did save us, yes. But we're looking today, in fact, we're seeing flooding in Lithia, we're seeing flooding in, in, in most of the rivers, the Anklet River's flooding, the Alify River's flooding, and it's flooding, you know, not the storm is two days past us, but we still have the tides. We still have the increased volume of water mm -hmm. in the basin up in this area that just adds to it. So Now, there's another controversy going on. And, and when you say controversy, these are things, it just means they're talking points because people want to make the best decisions. Right. This is the first time that we had a storm that we tracked as long as we did, yes. more than 11 days. But we were forecasting uh, seven to 10 days out. Now, our meteorologists are iffy on that. So, you know, from an emergency management standpoint, is that a good practice? Well, it's a good practice because the more informed your citizenries, your citizenry are, the better prepared they're going to be. Because people, you know, as we saw again, waited till the last minute to get fuel, to try to get water, to try mm -hmm. to get sandbags, and you saw a mad rush towards the end. If you have ample time to prepare, if you have enough time to fill up your vehicles full of gas, get the batteries, get the lights, and put your kits together for your survival, because the standard is that people should be prepared to be self-sustained for up to 72 hours. Right. And if they can't self-sustain, then, you know, the system's going to be working to try to rescue them or to save them. Mm -hmm. But it's never a bad idea, I think, to be early in forecasting. I mean, we all know that spaghetti models, in fact, you could look at the spaghetti models and right. see whether it was the European model or the GIS model, 
No one knew where the storm was going to go. I know, it was, it was all over Right, and up until the storm was actually south of us and it made that turn, we didn't know. We yeah, know. so, uh, and there was tremendous coordination between all of the agencies, and, and that was really good to see. Now, uh, what I was surprised to find out is a number of hospitals during the, pro during mm -hmm. the storm, and you are familiar with emergency medicine, mm -hmm. they had what they call the pass-by. They mm -hmm. were already full. We had that happen in, in Pinellas County in right. a couple of locations, in Hillsborough County. So are we prepared to handle things? I mean, we were mm -hmm. lucky. This was, we got some wind gusts of 95 miles an hour. Yes. Some of those, but in terms of the number of people that were injured, we were lucky, yet still our mm -hmm. ERs filled up. Well, they will fill up. And you see, it, again, part of emergency, local emergency management, is they have emergency support functions. And one of the functions is to look at bed counts, ESF-8, you know, help right. public health. And what they do is they do essentially a scoreboard where they have bed counts of available hospitals. And if a hospital is on what we call bypass, that means they can't take either patients that are being transported by rescues or walk-ins. They then have to go to a different facility. Part of the federal response to this is the Civil Reserve Air Fleet, or CRAF. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's something that DOD can involve to fly people into other areas. In fact, during Hurricane Katrina, we had some CRAF aircraft that assisted us. I spent time in New Orleans in the aftermath of Katrina right, uh, yeah. doing evacuations. And that very same scenario could have happened here as well. So do you have any tips, because we got about a minute left, mm -hmm. for the public that's talking about this? Our confidence in the emergency management system, though, is sky high now. We know yep. it works. But any advice that you would give to people that are watching? Us. Yes, ab absolutely. Uh, most important is to prepare your family, and as my colleagues know, what I'm fond of saying is have a plan. Develop yes, a family yeah. response or emergency plan. Have your important papers that you know that are critical to your life, your, your last will and testament, your marriage certificates, birth certificates. Have that in a waterproof container. Have a go bag that has up to three days of supplies, including medication. Be sure you have plenty of batteries on hand and flashlights. Mm -hmm. Refrain from using candles. If, right. if you're in a, if you're out without power because they they can create fires if you have a generator great be sure this is fueled and ready always make sure that when you use a generator you use it outside never inside never in a garage in a well ventilated area and then you have to make a decision and this is the tough one and josh yep. talked about this on the air with yep. me when we said you make your decision stick with it don't start second guessing because right. if something bad happens and that the part that people are second guessing on you say to yourself 75 miles an hour i think my roof can stand 85 miles an hour, 110 miles an hour, and that's what we were facing. Yes, we were. And you still had to make that tough decision, do I leave, do I go? Right, well, the Southern Building Code changed after Hurricane Andrew with hurricane stripping and you know different types of you know, rated windows and, and doors and walls. But a lot of houses in the Tampa area are pre, you know, hur yes. hur Hurricane Andrew. So, you know, if you're asking yourself the question, will my roof sustain, then that's an indicator that you need to evacuate. Go to a shelter. Well, uh, overall, A for uh, how we responded, you Absolutely, think? A plus. I have to say that our, our folks, local, state, and federal, have done a magnificent job. All right. Good talking to you, Chris. Dr. Yes, sir. Chris Reynolds, uh, emergency operations expert. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, us. Al. Appreciate it.